everyone, my name is Madden Wellens. Welcome to Event Zero, a sci fi narrative exploration game where you build a relationship with a lonely spaceship computer to get home to Earth. Feels like I've been playing quite a bit of sci fi games lately. Maybe that's all a rage. In any case, I don't know too much about the game aside from the tagline that we just read, but I do know that the AI we will be meeting is named Kaizen, which is the Japanese word for continuous improvement. It's also the name of a business practice? Philosophy? Which basically means something similar as well. Incrementally, continuously improving things. But I'm not really sure if the AI Kaizen will be related to anything I've mentioned here. And I guess we can find out right now. We're all obsessed by being someone, something, somewhere. Being in a particular state of consciousness, health, mind. Being for and from. Being with, being without. You were not an exception. Oh. For as long as you could remember, the pronoun that describes you best had been She is fine? You were very particular about it. Like everybody else, you called planet Earth your home. But you weren't like most of your peers. You spent your childhood... <laughs> uh, none of these things, I guess, but if I have to pick one... In a war-torn country, that sounds cool. After the war, Manila was not the best place to raise a child. Your parents had to sell their downtown condo. You moved to California. Those childhood memories, however painful, give you some solace. They meant you were someone, and you intended to keep it that way. Armstrong made a step on the moon, and suddenly, everyone wanted to be a part of something. You witnessed nation-states pop out of existence. Selenites became the privileged class of citizens. They were the minority who had traveled to space. It was hard to reconcile the modern world with your early days in Manila. The United Earth Government paid for your college. United Earth Government? Ah, okay, so... This Earth is markedly different from the Earth we're familiar with. You wanted to make a difference or give back to the society, or see what the rest of the universe looked like. Mm, I guess I want to give back to society. You decided that interplanetary ecology was the best way to do it. Years went by before the right opportunity presented itself. You had just finished giving a lecture at the International Transport Space Lines HQ, and an old man wearing a blue flight jacket approached you. He presented himself as Kurt Taylor, the president of ITS. Um, hello, sir. I don't bite, he said, grinning. You mumbled something incoherent. Sounds like me, all right. Kurt invited you to his office and closed the door behind you. He didn't ask you to sit. He kept standing. <laughs> he frowned and pointed at the chair forcefully. I asked you here because I wanted someone with your background to be a part of our next mission. Background? I heard you grew up in Manila. And look at you now. You know what Nietzsche said? She who has a why can bear almost any how. He grinned, clearly satisfied with himself and asked you to be a part of a mission to Europa. Europa again! Naturally, you said yes. Europa is one of Jupiter's moons, and it was also featured in another game I played recently called The Turing Test. There had already been 10 Europa missions. The new one was to be called Europa 11. This time, they wanted to send a manned lander down to the surface. You just wanted to be... A part of something. 
The act of being in itself is not the problem. It's just that some ways of being are incompatible with the others. We get obsessed by them and miss out on everything else. You came a long way from Manila. Hearing the launch countdown made you feel anxious. It wasn't a fear of going to space. You'd been looking forward to that. It was something else. A thought kept bugging you. It was September 6, 2012, and humankind had never been more united. You, on the other hand, were utterly alone. Us were building relationships 390 million miles away from Earth. Well... Let's just say that it wasn't going to be straightforward. So we're flying. We're flying to Europa now. You were alone in the ecology lab when the ship first entered Europa orbit. The central alarm went off and the red lights blinded you. The AI of Europa 11 had invoked the code red security protocol. All personnel had to go to the bridge. This meant you as well. You reached the end of the hallway, but the door closed right in front of you. Aww. Hmm. The system bay door was just a few feet away. You saw Josh from engineering operating the bay terminal before the system bay door was shut in front of you. Maybe it wasn't a drill after all. The AI of the ship told you that the path to the bridge wasn't safe and that you had to evacuate immediately. What's going on? A synthetic voice said that trying to get to the bridge had been too risky. It wanted you to evacuate. You ran to the escape pod bay. Everybody else turned out to be faster than you. Only one capsule remained docked. It got sealed and detached as soon as you got in. Oh, did we make it out? You could see the other escape capsules getting away from Europa 11. You tried to hail them. But no one answered. The other capsules drifted idly, uncontrolled. They were all empty. You tried to reach the command center. A signal had reached the Earth, and you even got a signal back. But it was white noise. Communications were jammed. Your pod was about to leave the orbit. In a code red scenario, the AI of Europa 11 was at the wheel of all escape pods. This was supposed to give the crew enough time to get into their EVA suits. The screen turned blue which meant the AI had let go. You felt a shock. The debris was hitting your capsule. The Europa 11 mission was over. The big dot on the radar had split into hundreds of smaller dots before disappearing for good. You needed a moment to process that. You sent out a distress signal, but no one answered. You just kept it running, despite the lack of sunlight. If no one found you, you wouldn't need the battery anyway. Cycles went by. You tried to establish communication with someone, whistling your favorite Filipino songs into the microphone. One day, you heard back. There was music coming out of the speakers. A sad female voice sang about the end of the world. You hurried to open the radar app. It's the end of the road. Oh. It was a hard trip. You didn't choose the easy way. We're the only person it's left on Europa. Everybody world. else has left because of an emergency. Fast and all the stars there it was, a spaceship. One of those experimental tourist monstrosities from the 80s. 
what was it doing there? What was all the singing about? Most importantly, was docking it a good idea? He figured he did not have much of a choice. Nautilus. And that's how we begin Event Zero. We've been left on Europa. Okay. Oh. We've landed. Successfully. Oh. But nobody's welcoming us. Or maybe that's a welcome. Oxygen control panel. Oxygen. People. Oxygen equals people, right? Oh. Okay. EVA suit. ITS standard issue old model. Old model. Are we on an old ship? Emergency re-entry medical kit. And it doesn't seem like I can interact with any of this. You can look, but no touching. Kaizen. Oh. Database corrupted. No user found. Creating a new user. Please enter a login. Do you want to keep that as your new login? Yes, please. You can tell it's an old computer by the chip tunes. Success. Hello. The currently active instance of this IA AI program is pleased to learn your name. Hello. It says right there that his name is Kaizen. Uh, <laughs> what is going on? Uh, where am I? Airlock one. Uh, what ship am I on? Okay. Well, it's an AI, so I don't really know what I'm expecting to hear from him. Let me get a little bit closer. J who are you? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, this might take a little bit of effort for us to work together. Where are the crew members? Oh. Um. What is the current day? <laughs> How about, what is the current year? I have a Okay, I have arrhythmia apparently. Well, I don't really know what to ask you. I need help. I need to go back to Earth. <laughs> Can you fly me back to Earth? Who is Nandy? Two decades later. What year is it right now? I have no clue. Um, well, for starters. It says D2 on it. Can you open D2? Okay. Just by asking you? Oh. Oh. 
sweet! Oh, but it's so slow, because it's a slow computer. Thank you! Aww! Okay, well... I guess we'll go in. Do you dream of distant planets, stars, and galaxies? Do you crave real adventure? Are you ready for the most transformative experience of your life? The ITS Corporation, leader in space transportation and hospitality sector, offers a unique opportunity to become a true pioneer it's in very universe old video. exploration. This fall, we're launching the Nautilus program, a new kind of space voyage aboard luxurious space yachts and cruisers. Touch the stars without having to sacrifice your comfort. No more compromise, only Nautilus. International Transport Space Lines. Comfort out of your comfort zone. To reserve your seat, visit the ITS Corporation headquarters in Palo Alto, California. Oh! Whoa. The whole feeling of this room is so old school. Like in the 80s or something. I think it's the coloring, the coloring of this carpet. Oh, wow. Aw. Classy, I guess. <laughs> Books on political science. Kaizen. Oh, yeah, that's the Japanese word for Kaizen. Meaning continuous improvement. Hmm. Is that his... Is that what he really looks like? Or is that just like some random mascot? KZ, I digital camera online. It's a Roomba. They had Roombas in the 80s? Holy crap. Wake up on the moon in 10 hours. No more compromise, only Nautilus. Comfort, out of your comfort zone. That's a, I like the slogan. But the image needs to go. It's not good enough. Standard issue security armchair. Not installed. <laughs> it's not installed, alright. Okay, so there's a few seats here that lets you look outside. Oh. What the heck is that? It's moving. Hmm. Plates. Dirty plates. Somebody's been eating here. Departure, April 4th, 19, 1987, arrival, null, elapsed time, 2,500 days, holy crap. Final Frontier, yeah, 1987, so that's our year. Can we crouch? I don't think so. One Earth, one people, one horizon. Ho <laughs> ho! That's when uh, Earth got united in, apparently, 1986. Cool. Not too far. Never alone. Suicide prevention. The Robinson Syndrome is not the end of the line. Four billion people are waiting for you back on Earth. You are not alone. Oh. I don't know what Robinson Syndrome is, but it sounds like maybe astronauts, when they stay away from Earth for too long, they get lonely and... They commit suicide? Is that what it is? Oh my goodness. Well, I mean, we kind of see everything here already. And there's another door. So, would it be okay of me to ask Kaizen to please open D3? Um, uh, sure, yeah, I, li I like it. Oh, do you mean the music? Oh, can you turn on the TV? Yes, buddy. Again? Oh, we don't need this again. Whoa. I don't know if I like him calling me pet names like that. 
Um, where is everybody? Well, I have to say it's working. It's working better than the other room. Hmm. So is this still on Europa? Are we on Europa? I'm in the lobby, and the lobby of Nautilus. Tell me about the Nautilus. Nautilus. Latest. Well, latest during that time. Uh, are we in 2000? What? What's a better way to ask about the year? What year is this? 25 years. Okay. What? Happened to the Nautilus. This space vessel is part of the Nautilus program. Hmm. Guess we're just asking to open the door. You don't have to go out there for you. Well, uh, oh, what do you want me to do? You want me to just stay here forever? Can you please open co corridor D3? Execution failed. The door is locked. Oh! Not. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? What are you doing, buddy? I am so sorry. My so very important. Give me one second. I need to align myself better. What? Do you want to put our chip in my bottom? Yes. Please tell me. Mm, okay. What is the singularity drive? Oh, hang on. Something that can take me from the Earth to the moon in 10 hours. It's this! Okay, but why- If you take it out, doesn't that mean I can't go home? Can I scroll up, by the way? I don't think I can scroll up. Oh. Okay, well... Why do we need to destroy the drive? Okay. Well, how do I go back to Earth then? <laughs> I want to go home. Open D3, please. Please listen to what I have to say the bottom of later. Hmm. Okay, well, where is the singularity drive? The singularity drive is one of the engines of this ship. This is what allows it to leave from space. Now, this does not matter. We are not going anywhere until you go to the bridge and destroy the drive from other. We need to go to the bridge and destroy the drive. Where is the bridge? Was that area over there the bridge? That's the airlock. Okay, where is the bridge? Well, I'm not in the corridor, am I? <laughs> I'm in the lobby. Where... Uh... Is the corridor? Can't type. It connects the bridge with the lobby. It connects the bridge with the lobby. 
The corridor is over there, but you just closed the door. Can you let me go t go to the corridor? Whoa. Yes. Please open the door. <laughs> I need to go to the bridge. No, 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 no. Do you understand me? You're telling me I need to go destroy the drive. The drive is in the bridge. The bridge, I can only go there through the corridor. But you're not letting me go to the corridor. That's what's happening, right? Please, whoa, please let me go to the bridge. D7. Where is D7? Oh my freaking god. This is like talking to a brick wall. <laughs> okay. Okay, no, 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 we have to, we have to communicate properly. Communication is key, right? So... I will destroy the drive. How do I go to the bridge? Oh my freaking god. Okay. Please open the door to D7 then. Okay. It's all happy again. Wow, that was like... Oh my goodness, my communication skills are not there, okay? Oh, jeez.